All right, uh, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is arithmetic sequences and more applications towards them. An arithmetic sequence, again, is a, a sequence where the difference between consecutive values is constant. Uh, so in this particular example, you'll see that it's going up by twos, so it has a common difference of two. Uh, the formula that defines the general term or any term of an arithmetic sequence, it's useful to use formulas because sequences go on forever, so it helps to make predictions, is defined by... Uh, Tn is equal to T1 plus N minus 1 times D, uh, where these are the, the different uh, values for those different variables. Um, and we looked at that in a previous lesson. So let's look at a few examples here, and I'll show you how to use the general formula. Uh, it says determine the general term Tn for the sequence 9, 5, 1, negative 3, etc., etc., then determine T15. So what that means, first of all, is let's define this particular pattern in general form. So what we know is that the first term, or the value of the first term, t1, is going to be equal to 9. And we also know the common difference. As long as we know the common difference in the first term, we can define any term in the sequence. So the common difference here is negative 4. So the general term would be that tn is equal to 9 plus n minus 1 times negative 4. And if I put this into standard form, so I multiply the negative 4, or distribute the negative 4, tn is equal to 9 minus 4n plus 4, and collecting like terms, the general term would be negative 4n plus 13. Now I can apply and find out any term. So for example, this question says determine the 15th term. So if I want to know what t15 is, I would substitute 15 in for n because that's uh, the term number. So t15 is equal to negative 4 times 15 plus 13. And that equals, or the 15th term in other words, would be negative 47. Another approach to this would be just to write out and this one's not too hard to do. Just write out the sequence until you get to the 15th term. And if you do that, what you're going to see happen is that the 15th term, and I'll just continue this pattern here until we get there, uh, the 15th term will be negative 47. 13th term, 14th term, 15th term. So either way you do it, you get the 15th term. But the general formula is useful. You'll see that in the next one. Uh, what term number is 314 for the sequence? Negative 28, negative 19, negative 10, negative 1, 8, etc. Uh, one way to do this would be, and this would be a huge waste of time, would be to list the numbers until you get all the way to 314 and ask yourself, what does n equal in that case? Another way to do it is to use the formula. We know a variety of things. We know the common difference is 9, or positive 9. We do not know what n is. That's the question mark. We do know the value of the nth term. The value of the term that we're looking for, or in other words, tn, is going to be 314. And we also know the first term. We know the first term in this particular case is negative 28. So we have enough information to start this. The value of the term we're looking for, or dealing with, is 314. That's equal to negative 28 plus, and we don't know what n, so it's n minus 1 times 9. Now if I put this into standard form and solve, I'll be able to solve this particular problem. So I have negative 28 plus 9n minus 9. So this is 314 is equal to 9n minus 37 if I add 37. I'm going to have that 351 is equal to 9n, and if I divide by 9, uh, I'm going to get that n is equal to 39. So in this particular case, <clears throat> it is the 39th term in the list of numbers. That would have taken us a long time had we done it a different way. Uh, all right, let's look at the next one. In this particular question, what it's saying is determine the first term or the value of the first term if you know that the eighth term is 68 and you know that the 14th term is 2. So we could have a list of numbers. Here's probably a better way of approaching this. Uh, you could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 terms. We know that the 8th term is 68, and we also know that the 14th term is 2. So one thing we could do, if we look at the general formula, we'd, we actually have two question marks. We do not know the first term, okay, and we also don't know the common difference. We do know uh, a couple of other things. We know, first of all, uh, that if we're looking at 68, then the value of the term is 68, and n would be 8 for that particular case because it's the 8th term, so the 8th term would be 68. So if we could find either term, well, if we could find the common difference, in other words, we could then find what term 1 is. Uh, I wouldn't use the formula in this particular case. I'd actually just use the pattern. What you'll notice is that there's a total of 1, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or in other words, 14 minus 8, because they differ by 6 terms. There's 6 common differences. And we know that the change there, the total change, uh, is negative 66. So we know that 6 differences is equivalent to going down by 66. So what that helps us find out, and this is a faster way of doing it, is that the common difference is negative 11. So now, what we can do is use either of these terms, 68 or 2, doesn't matter which one, to actually find out what the first term is. Because uh, maybe I'll use 68. So if we use 68, for example, this would be uh, the eighth term, and it would be uh, a value of n would be 8. So if I substitute that into the formula, uh, 68, which is the value of the term, is equal to, we don't know the first term, plus, but we know the number of term that 68 is. 68 is the eighth term, minus 1, and times, now we know the common difference is negative 11. So if I work backwards, actually, uh, probably what I could do here first would be term 1 plus 7 times negative 11, and that would be 68 is equal to term 1 minus 77, and if I add 77, uh, that could also be that term 1 is equal to 145. An alternative method would be the non uh, way of doing that, or the non uh, formulaic way of doing that, is just solving using the pattern that we've noticed. Once you have the common difference, if the common difference is negative 11, then as we work backwards, uh, you'd be going up by 11. So if I work backwards from the eighth term by going up by 11s, uh, what you're going to see happening is I'll find out what the first term is. So I'm just going up by 11s here, and what I'll find out is that my first term is 145. So that's kind of an interesting way of doing it as well. This last particular problem says that the terms x plus 5, negative 2x minus 5, and 3x plus 1 are consecutive terms in an arithmetic sequence. So in some sequence here, they fall next to each other. Uh, it says determine the value of x and the three terms. Now, how are these related? If I call these, for example, a, b, and c, what we do know is that the difference between b and a, the common difference between b and a, is equivalent to the difference between c and b. So if I can use that and that relationship to set up a formula, I can actually solve for x and what the numbers are. So if I replace b, a, and c with these particular um, expressions, then we'll finish this off. So this is negative 2x minus 5 minus x plus 5, so b minus a, is equivalent to the difference between 3x plus 1 minus negative 2x minus 5. Uh, so this would be, <clears throat> if I just follow this through completely, uh, make sure that you're subtracting the entire expression, which is what I've shown here. If I collected like terms, I would have negative 3x minus 10 is equivalent to 5x plus 6. And if I put the constants onto the left side and the variable terms onto the right side, what I'm going to get in this particular case is negative 16 is equivalent to 8x, or in other words, x is equal to negative 2. And if x is equal to negative 2, then we can find out what all the terms are, because the first term we know is x plus 5, and negative 2 plus 5 is 3. The second term is negative 2x minus 5, and negative 2 times negative 2 minus 5 is equivalent to negative 1. And the third term, which is 3x plus 1, and this better follow a pattern, it better be negative 5 because it's going down by 4s in this case. Uh, but if we do 3 times negative 2 plus 1, we will get negative 5. So those are the actual values.